I thought we'd just keep reading the story, Ted, and find out what happens when they meet this funny little man. Joe looks a little bit worried. <clears throat> the funny old saucepan man. I don't think he's dangerous, said Franny. He has quite a kind face. Let's knock at the window, said Bessie. So she tapped, but the saucepan man took no notice. He went on dancing, crashing his saucepans together. Joe tapped loudly. The saucepan man caught sight of him at the window and looked most astonished. He stopped dancing and came to the door. Come in, come in and dance, he said. Oh, uh, no thank you, said Joe. We've come to ask you to come to tea. Ask me for a bee, said saucepan man, looking surprised. I'm sorry, but I don't keep bees, only saucepans. Not bees, said Joe, to ask you to afternoon tea. No, I don't want to go to the sea, said the saucepan man. I don't like the water at all, never did. Very kind of you, I'm sure, but I hate the sea. Not the sea, but tea, 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 cried Joe. Well, oh, tea, said the saucepan man. Well, why didn't you say that before? Then I would have understood. I did say it before, said Joe. What? Shut the door, said the saucepan man. Certainly, if you want to, give, give it a push. I don't think he can hear very well, said Franny. He must be a bit deaf. No, I'm not, said the saucepan man, hearing perfectly all of a sudden. Not a bit deaf. Only sometimes when my saucepans have been crushing around me rather a lot, I get noises in my ears afterwards. But I'm not deaf. I'm glad of that, said Joe politely. Cat? No, I haven't got a cat, said saucepan man looking all around. Did you see one? Oh, I didn't say anything about a cat, said Joe. You did, I heard you, said the saucepan man. I don't encourage cats, I keep mice instead. I shall look out for that cat. And then with his saucepans clushing around him, he began to look for a cat. Certain, that certainly wasn't there. Pause, 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 he called. Pause, 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 pause. There's no cat in your house, cried Moonface. Mouse? Did you see mouse? said the old saucepan man alarmed. I wouldn't like one of my mice to be caught by your cat. <gasps> I tell you, we don't have a cat, said Joe, getting quite cross. We've come to tell you about your friend, Mr. What's-his-name. For a wonder, the saucepan man heard Joe, and he at once stopped looking for the cat. Mr. What's-his-name, he said. Where is he? He's a good friend of mine. Well, then, wouldn't you like to go and have a cup of tea with him, said Joe. Yes, I certainly would, said the saucepan man. Please tell me where he is. He's sitting on the ladder, leading from the faraway tree to your land, shouted Joe. He's waiting there. He, yes, he's waiting there for me, said Moonface in a whisper. Shh, said Franny. The saucepan man gave a yell of joy when he heard that his old friend was here. He set off for the cliff, shouting in delight. Hurrah! I've come to the faraway tree, and I shall see my friends again. And Mr. What's-His-Name is waiting for me to have tea with him. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, Ted, he's a bit strange, isn't he? I think he is a bit deaf, don't you? So up the cliff they went, treading on all the saucepan steps, to his own saucepans and kettles, rattling and banging all around him. The children and Moonface followed. Saucepan Man ran helter-skelter to the hole that led down to the top branch. He dropped a few saucepans on the way. When he got there, he peered down to see Mr. What's-His-Name sitting on the ladder, waiting for Moonface. But the saucepan man didn't know that, of course. He thought his friend was waiting for him. Hey, 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 he yelled, dropping a saucepan on top of Mr. What's-His-Name. Hey, old friend. Mr. What's-His-Name watched the saucepan bouncing off his foot down the branch of the tree, and he wondered who it would hit next. He looked up in amazement when he heard his friend shout, Saucepan, he yelled. Dear old saucepan, fancy seeing you. Glue, 
said the saucepan man, suddenly hearing all wrong again. Glue? No, I haven't got any glue with me, but I can soon make some for you. Still the same silly old saucepan, aren't you? cried Mr. Watts's man. Come down here. I didn't say anything about glue. Come and have a cup of tea with me. The kettle's boiling. No, I don't need oiling, said the saucepan man, though he really sounded as if he did. I'll come and have tea and talk with you. So he put his foot on the ladder, but unfortunately, he stepped on one of his saucepans. Oh, and he then he got, went, they got tangled round his leg and he went down, clatter, bang, crash, smash, clang. Mr. Watts's name caught hold of him as he went past. And down he went to, rolling off the ladder, down the branch, past Moonface's door and down the tree. Oh, there they go, said Moonface in delight, all mixed up with kettles and saucepans. What a joke. They'll give old Mother Washalot a fright if they fall into her wash tub. The children laughed till they cried. The old saucepan man was really so funny and they couldn't imagine what people in the tree would think as he rolled down with such a clanging and a banging. It's quite safe to go down now, jo said Joe, peering down the ladder. They've all gone. I shouldn't wonder if they're, they're at the bottom of the tree by now. Come on, Moonface. So down the ladder they all went, slid back to the top branch of it and opened Moonface's door. Silky was still there, looking scared out of her life. She gave a scream for joy when she saw them. Why are you looking so frightened? asked Moonface, giving her a hug. Oh goodness, some thunderbolt noise, just something fell out of the sky just now and rolled crashing down the tree, said Silky. Oh, that was Saucepan Man, said Mr. What's-His-Name. Joe laughing and he told her the whole story. Silky laughed till her sides ached. She ran out the door and she peered down the tree. Look, she said, pointing. Can you see far down there between the branches? They all looked and they saw Mr. What's-His-Name and the old saucepan man climbing painfully back up to Mr. What's-His-Name's home, both talking together at the top of their voices. They've forgotten all about us, said Joe joyfully. Now, for goodness sake, Moonface, don't go putting acorns into Mr. What's-His-Name's mouth again. Let's have something to eat and then we can go home down the slippery dip. So all five of them sat around Moonface's funny little room and ate some pop biscuits that Silky had fetched and drank acornade, which was made of acorns, which was most delicious. Then it was time for the children to go. They chose their cushions, sat on the top of the big slide, pushed off and flew down the inside of the tree, sliding round and round till they shot out the trap door at the bottom on the cushion of moss. Then they ran home as fast as they could because they were late. I expect old saucepan man's gone back to his strange land by now, said Joe, as they ran into their gate. But he hadn't. He came to see them the very next day with his saucepans clanging so loudly that Mother looked quite alarmed. Who in the world is that, she said, as saucepan came through their gate. Oh, there he is coming to visit them. And the next one's called The Saucepan Man Goes to the Wrong Land. Uh-oh, Ted, I can feel something bad's going to happen.